She named it by asking the board what it would like to be called, and it spelled out the letters O-U-I-J-A. She was a spiritualist, a medium. Let's see if we can communicate with her just how she would have wanted. One of the most popular city parks, but hiding beneath the surface of this beautiful city park is something much darker. To this day, it's estimated that there are 2,000 bodies still buried in the earth here at Cheeseman Park. That's messed up. Whoa. Whoa. Helen, do you think people should still be using the Ouija board to communicate with spirits? Ooh, I thought I just heard a, a man's voice say Ouija. How many people are still buried underneath of this park? Many. Grave. Grave. That's freaking creepy. Today, our adventure brings us to Denver, Colorado, to Fairmount Cemetery. The second oldest cemetery in the state, it's known for its grand monuments and mausoleums. But tucked deep within its 280 acres is the grave of a woman who is credited with naming the world's most controversial spirit communication device. The Ouija board as we know it today was invented and mass produced in 1890, and the man who was manufacturing them didn't even believe in spiritualism, but he saw its marketability and appeal as a product to sell to the masses. Since then, the Ouija board has become the most well-known and also most feared spirit communication device. This is you, Debbie? Then who the hell is this? We're here to find the grave of the spiritualist and medium who gave the controversial board its name and to see if we can communicate with her the same way that she tried to communicate with the spirits of so many people. All right, Ryan, we are here in Denver in Fairmount Cemetery. This is a little bit different than what we normally do for our episodes because we normally do interior buildings that are considered to be haunted, but we heard about this cemetery and knew we had to come here. I mean, there are tens of thousands of people buried here, but we're here to focus on one person in particular. That's right. And that is the lady who named the Ouija board. Her name was Helen Nosworthy, and her grave is here. She was a spiritualist, a medium, but how she named the spirit board to be the Ouija board, we're gonna find out when we get over there. But to give us a tour of this cemetery and tell us more about Helen, we're here with our dear friends from Paranormal Encounters. That's right. Hi. Hello. 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 Thanks for joining us out here today. I know you have specific interest in this cemetery. You've been here a couple of times. You even made a TikTok about it, India. So let's walk over and see if we can find Helen's grave and you can tell us about this cemetery and tell us what inspired the name to one of the most famous spirit communication tools ever created. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Connor and in India have been to Helen's grave before, and even though they've never filmed here for their YouTube channel, they had a strange response come through the ghost tube while they were attempting to make contact. The last time that Indy and I were here, we were trying to find Helen's grave, and we ran ghost tube by her grave. I asked a question like, um, we made something significant in the paranormal world. Seance. Seance. <laughs> oh my God, it's a seance. That is awesome, yes. And she said seance through ghost tube. It was oh, like wow. right after I asked that question. So it was actually really cool. That is bizarre because Helen was known for her seances. She was a spiritualist. She believed to be a medium, right India? So Helen was a medium and she was friends with the man who claimed to invent the Ouija board. She was buried here and she had a new grave put in I think it was 2018 by the Talking Board Historical Society. They had discovered that she was the woman who named the Ouija board and they wanted to give her a grave that represented that. So you'll see when we get there, it is one of the coolest graves you'll ever see. Um, and it does represent the Ouija board. But finding Helen's grave won't be an easy task. Despite being here before, Connor and India only remember the general area where her final resting place is located. And this cemetery is massive. 
Fairmount Cemetery is on 280 acres of land. There are lots of people buried here. The mausoleum alone has 17,000 people inside of it. Wow. So yeah, um, that was the, the last stat that I read about anyway. So there are a lot of potential hauntings in this area. There are lots of ghost stories about this place. People see lights, people have tried to capture um, apparitions and just the, when the picture comes out, it's just black. There's nothing on the camera. Um, and there are lots and lots and lots of ghost stories, like so many that it would take forever to go through them all, but it's definitely a beautiful cemetery with a lot of history and potentially a lot of hauntings. Would you say from what you've heard, because you've lived in the Denver area for off and on for a while. Yeah. Would you say that Fairmount Cemetery is probably one of the most haunted cemeteries in Colorado? It's the second oldest cemetery in Colorado. So yes, if, I mean, obviously I've never investigated it. Um, I wonder actually, this is the white, are these the Whiteheads? That is the Whiteheads. Yeah. So this is the Whitehead grave over here. We've got Dr. William. He is known for living in the Peabody Whitehead mansion, which is said to be the most haunted house in Denver. It's downtown. So Dr. Whitehead was an army doctor and he used to have these visions of the people that didn't survive, that he treated the soldiers um, coming for him. And he thought that they were haunting him because he couldn't save them. So people think that he haunts the house. There are said to be 12 ghosts in that house. And uh, is that, is, is that police? No. That, well, maybe. That would be police. Yeah. The PQ curse. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, uh, yeah, I think there, he hit a tombstone back there or something. They're up against the car. Yeah, over there. here comes another one. Oh here boy, what have we done? So yeah, Dr. Whitehead, there's a fire truck. Well, we've got to go up there because Helen's grave is up there. So hopefully they, that's not her grave somebody hit. Hopefully that's not. That's what happened. I'm going to roll on ghost tube while we walk around. Okay. Because I feel like you never know what's going to come through. If you guys had seance come through right. ghost tube, mm -hmm while you were by Helen's grave. Mm -hmm. Who knows with all the people that could be watching us right now, mm -hmm. who knows what's gonna come through. Uh, Dr. Whitehead, if you're here and you would like to follow us around and communicate with us, you said that you got visions and stuff, right? And um, if you'd like to come and follow us around and talk to us through our equipment, you're more than welcome. Today of all days, Helen's grave may be even more difficult to get to than we thought. Emergency vehicles flood into Fairmount Cemetery, and we find out a car accident has just taken place very close to where Nosworthy's grave is located. Did you buy one of those I'm brothel leaving. tokens? No. Did you get something? Shoot. said, I'm leaving. I'm leaving? Oh, wow, look at that one. Gate. Gate? Gate? There, I mean, there is a gate to the cemetery. That, I've never seen that one. That's really cool. I've never seen a headstone like that. No, I gotta take a picture of that. It's actually kind of eerie. <laughs> it do is. You, do you not want to be here anymore? Are you going to leave? Criminal. 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 Said criminal, right? We've been rolling on this for like over five or 10 minutes and nothing has come through while we're walking around here. And then I get to this spot and three words come through. Three responses come through. I'm leaving, gate, criminal. Don't go there. Don't go there. Are they maybe, are they talking about the police being over there? Hello. Hello. Who is speaking to us right now? What's your name? It literally said nothing the whole time we were over there. Yeah. That's a lot of responses in, in a short time. That usually never happens. Yeah. But yeah. We're standing right next to a mother and a father too, but who else would be? Around are you here. saying there's a criminal over there? I don't think I don't think they're a criminal. I think maybe there was an accident. I think. Here comes another one. Yeah. Don't know if it's going over here, but hopefully everybody's all right. Yeah, I wonder what's going on. I don't know. It's very strange. Well, like they did some, say they were something leaving. Was maybe passing through. Yeah. But also, you have to remember that. Look at all these graves yeah. and 280 acres. Yeah. 
how many of them might be passing through. Like it could be anybody. Oh yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Shall we press yeah. on? Let's press, press on. It. Here comes the ambulance. Uh, oh, there is paramedics. Somebody's had some, something's happened. Elderly. 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 Did you did you pass on your elderly, or is there an elderly person over there that's injured right now? Did you go over there to find out what was going on? Can you tell us what's happening while all these emergency vehicles are here? It'd be interesting to find more information on what is going on just across the cemetery from us to know if any of the words could be relevant. Is there any spirits in this? Run. Run. What? Run. Oh, how lovely. It says run. When I was going to say, is there any spirits here, but. What do we, what, what should we run from? Hospital. 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 Do you need to run to the hospital? You, are you, or are you telling them, the paramedics over there to run? Is somebody over there hurt? That definitely sounds like somebody saying either I need to get to a hospital quickly or they do, the, the, whoever's over there. Yeah. You know, it kind of seems what? like a lot of the responses are relevant because we did go through a gate to come in here. Yeah. I mean, that could be just pulling something out of the air, but there's a gate, hospital, run. Criminal. Criminal. When the police are here. Well, what's interesting is, well, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled and see if there's any news articles yeah. later on for something that may have happened here. Mm -hmm. But if we see that article and it has to do with someone needing medical attention that was elderly here in the cemetery, I'm going to <laughs> my pants. <laughs> well, def there's definitely somebody needing medical there's attention because the there's two paramedics. Yeah. There's another one. This is another fire truck. Damn. Something really this serious is, Yeah, happened. this has got to be serious. But Two fire trucks, two paramedics, police. I mean, maybe that's just standard procedure. I don't know, but that seems a lot. How many think? fire trucks are there? That's like three, right? That's two. That's two, two fire trucks and this ambulance. This is interesting. Look at this. Police. Look at the name on this one. Estes. Oh wow. Oh my God! Look at that. Protect. 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 How very fitting, because I think whenever we get to Helen's grave and we learn more about how she actually discovered the name for the Ouija board, I think we should do an Estes session there at the grave. I think so too. I think that would be interesting. Especially since we had seance last time we were here with Ghost Tube. Yeah. This wide angle, just real quick, looks like a band cover right now. With all three of you walking, like you're in the side, you're in the side, you're in the middle. It's like band cover. That's right, we gotta do the ghost hunter there's pose. Your, there's your thumbnail. Yeah, hey, go, go, come on. We need thumbnail. We need thumbnail. I need the most. I need the most. Hang on. 90s, 90s music video. What is up? <laughs> well, we've hit a conundrum because. When you think you know where it is, but you don't. This massive cemetery is very difficult to locate one singular grave. It was weird that we came across Whitehead's grave so quickly, but we have no idea where Helen is right now. And we are a little lost, but luckily it looks like that accident was cleaned up. It looked like someone had actually hit a tombstone with their car or something with their car and the airbag deployed. So we're gonna probably walk back this way and see if we can find Helen. She's over there. I can see a grave. She's right. She's right behind this statue. I know because I can see the moon and the star. It is official. We've officially found Helen. Let's go over here and take a look. Learn how she discovered the name for the Ouija board and see if we can communicate with her just how she would have wanted. There she is. There's Helen. The woman who named the Ouija board. You know, her story is actually on the back of this stone, um, but she named it by asking the board what it would like to be called. And it spelled out the letters O-U-I-J-A. And she asked what that meant. And the board told her good luck. So 
ever since then it's been the Ouija board so yeah wow. and you can read her full story on the back of her stone so originally it started out as a symbol of good luck not as something evil like it's portrayed today right, right. on the evening about April 1890 while trying the board with Miss Nosworthy I remarked that we had not yet settled upon a name and as the board had helped us in other ways we would ask it to propose one it spelled out O-U-I-J-A. When I asked the meaning of the word, it said, good luck. Miss Peters thereupon drew from her neck a chain which had at the end a locket on it, the figure of a woman, and at the top, the word Ouija. We asked her if she had thought of this name, and she said she had not. We then adopted the word. Wow. That's cool. There it is. So you want to set up some equipment and see if we can do some investigating here and see if maybe she'll come through and talk to us because she's such a spiritualist. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's get set up. Let's set up. As we said when we found the grave of the Estes family, we're going to perform an Estes Method spirit box session at the grave of Helen Peters Nosworthy to see if a woman who was invested in spirit communication and life will talk to us from the other side. Unfortunately, because of the time delay with the car accident near Helen's grave, we have a brand new episode premiering on YouTube as we start this session. So India volunteers to sit the session out to chat with you all in the live premiere to allow Dave Connor and I to focus on speaking to Helen if she wants to come through and talk to us. God, I can't see. Probably be better from that side. Whoa. Yeah. REM pod. Is the REM pod going off? Yeah. Well, it's like some we are scanning. Out. All right, Ryan, are you ready? Ryan, are you ready? Okay, he can't. It's a man's voice. Hey. Sound like a woman said hello. All right, Helen. We are here to try and communicate with you. We know that uh, you named the Ouija board. And we have a new device here to try and talk with the spirit world. Can you come through the radio and communicate with us? It was her. Who was her? Oh, that was a woman's voice there. I don't know what it said though. I'll have to review it. How do you feel knowing that the Ouija board has a negative connotation now? You, oh, you are, but then there was a woman's voice as I was talking. Has a negative connotation now. Oh, you are, but then there was a woman's voice as I was talking. Should this be? REM pod. Whoa. REM pod's going off again. Helen, is that you touching our device on top of your tombstone? If it is, could you talk to Ryan? This is Ryan and let him know. Yep. My name is Dave, that's Ryan, and that's Connor right yep. over there. But somebody's making our REM pod go off there on top of your tombstone. Is that you? Really quick. Wanna talk. Oh, want to talk. Fine. Mine. Let me turn on ghost tube for you. Do you have ghost tube already? Are you running on ghost tube I already? I can run on it right now. I don't have Oh, ghost you're running tube. on it now? I will run on it right now if you'd okay. like. Ghost tube running. Ryan, David, Connor, S's session. Hey, who's making... Here you go. Who's making communication with us? Tell us what your name is. Helen, there are four. Four of us here. There is four of us. Helen, the last time that I came here with India, who's over there, you said seance after I asked you if there's anything you want to say. Was that you? Hey, 
Helen. Zero. Did you like using the talking Zero. board? Zero. Were you afraid? I of like it. Dude. That's awesome. Were you afraid of it? Were you afraid of the talking board, the Ouija board? Just heard a woman laughing. Helen, do you think people should still be using the Ouija board to communicate with spirits? Is that still a good way to communicate? Oh, that was a creepy voice. So many people look at that board as this evil. How do you feel about that? He won't. Helen, if you're talking to Ryan through the device, the radio, can you tell him how many fingers I'm holding up? We know that you like communicating. I mean it. So can you tell him? Ooh, I thought I just heard a, a man's voice say Ouija. I'll have to review that and double check it because I don't trust myself with power of suggestion, but I swear that's what it said. Hi, woman's voice. Hello, please tell us your name. That was a weird, weird, weird voice. Find me. Find me. find me. Helen, where where do we go to find you? Give us a hint. Talk to Ryan. How much? It's dead. It's dead? Dying. It died. It's dying. Okay. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm grabbing a new battery. Can you tell us what the word Luigi stands for? She's here. Who's here? Alice. Oh my God. What'd it say? I just asked who's here and it said Alice. Dr. Pink. Alice? Who's Alice? Something about a doctor. Doctor, what was his name? Whitehead? It just said Alice after I asked what, what is your name? Cause you stopped in the recording. Dr. Whitehead. Yes, woman's voice. Is Dr. Whitehead here? Recording, recording, resyncing. Helen, come through and talk to us, please. We really want to talk to you. We've been waiting a really long time for this, and we came all the way from Pittsburgh. Whoa. Grandpa just got tapped. Yeah. Did you just touch the REM pod on your tombstone, Helen? If you did, try touching that no. again. Oh, wow. That's cool. Thank you for communicating there. If you can, Helen, try touch that again. Oh. Try making that light go off. No. Okay, you don't have to. Just thought that you might want to, to communicate since you liked doing that. Thank you for making something so significant for people that want to communicate with spirits. Thank you for having a part of that. That's true. Helen, if you can hear us and there is something that, something or somewhere that we go after we die, can you let us know through the radio that Ryan has? Helen, can you come to this device in my hand and, you, and say the word seance like you did for me last time I was here? Can you please use the word seance? That was a full sentence, but I couldn't understand Rituals. it. Rituals, dude, that's close. That is pretty close, and that's essentially what you're doing. Yeah. If you look at it in that, if you look at it in that perspective, you're basically doing a ritual. Yeah. To communicate with spirits. Yeah, for sure. 
thank you for using this device in my hand and giving us a word. Is it okay that we go around? We died? Is a question mark. Like yeah. a very question inflection. You did die. Very questioning inflection. You are dead. Is it okay that we go around trying to speak with spirits, with those who have passed away? Is that okay? Helen, can people be empathic? Can certain people be more in tune with the spirit world than others? I can hear him. Helen, you are the woman who named the Ouija board. What year did you make that name? What year did you give it that name? Helen, if you can hear my voice, what is the best way we can communicate with you? Computer. Pretty much. Computer. Easier way to talk. <gasps> you asked that. What? That's awesome. Helen, do you like this radio that we're using? Maybe she's talking about this as a computer. Maybe. Essentially it is, the computer. It's a modern day Ouija board. The new one? <laughs> <laughs> That's too cool. All right, Helen, we're gonna have to take off here. The cemetery is getting ready to close, unfortunately. Are you, are you still listening to us? Are you still here? Do we get a choice to be at peace or to roam the earth? What happens after we pass away? Is it all over after we pass away? I feel free. Wow. That's wild. That is wild. You feel you feel freedom? You feel free since you've passed? Yes or no, Helen? Helen, we've got to leave now. Can you tell us goodbye through the radio? Or through the computer? So we'd love to hear you say it. I need to come out for a second, move around. I'm yeah, stiff we're getting as a board. ready to end it. Okay. I thought we were just getting ready to end it. We were waiting for that one word we were trying to ask you to say. Dude, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, was it was it? It was pretty wild. Any of it intelligent? At the, very, at the very end, it got really, really creepy. And it also was really cool because a lot of the stuff we were asking you towards the end, you were being, it was seriously on point. Like, <laughs> film Dave, like it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. So, that was quite interesting. Uh, what a way to start off a f first part of this investigation. Speaking, hopefully, to Helen Peters Nosworthy, the lady that named the Ouija board. There's a place that's even more haunted than this from what I've heard from you, Connor. So do you want to head over there and Let's see uh, see what we can find here in Denver? There's a place, there are so many bodies and skeletons and remains that they still find them to this day and we're gonna go down there and check it out and see what that's all about this journey this adventure this quest through denver is just getting started what's up everyone real quick before we get to the next location on this quest we have an exciting announcement for you that is right as of this week our brand new merch site is now live. We know that you guys love abandonment and the we're leaving tagline even more. We're leaving! So we went ahead and made some merch for that as well. That's right, you can actually get the original Paranormal Quest skull logo, the brand new Paranormal Quest text logo, as well as a limited edition zombie Dave and Ryan logo on almost all of the merch. We have candles, we have sweatshirts, we have t-shirts, we have stickers, we have hats. You want it? We have it over at ParanormalQuestMerch.com. That's right, go check it out and grab yourself something. And let's get back into our next location. 
on this Denver adventure. These days, Cheeseman Park is a popular spot for joggers, dog walkers, and others who just want to enjoy the beautiful green space. Some, maybe most, without knowing what's just a few feet underneath. To this day, it's estimated that there are 2,000 bodies still buried in the earth here at Cheeseman Park. All right, so we are now standing in one of the most popular city parks in the city of Denver. And we are surrounded by so many people that are having fun playing with their dogs, walking around. But hiding beneath the surface of this beautiful city park is something much darker, something much more sinister. Yeah, a lot of very, very dark secrets that maybe a lot of these people here don't even know about. Yes, this is Cheeseman Park. Not many people know that Cheeseman Park originally was the Prospect Hill Cemetery back in the 1890s. This was one of the first cemeteries in the city of Denver and was eventually renamed the Denver City Cemetery. They decided they were gonna shut the cemetery down in the 1890s, but they already had 5,000 people buried here. It's a huge problem. So they hired an undertaker named E.P. McGovern to come in here. They paid him $1.90 a piece to pull these bodies up from the ground, put them in caskets, and replace them in other cemeteries throughout the city. There was a problem though, McGovern was trying to scam the city of Denver. He decided he was going to find an excess of child's caskets, and he was going to dismember and cut up the bodies of adults that were buried here in this cemetery, and then put them in smaller caskets so he could make more money. That's messed up. That, that is. is pretty messed up. So, what they decided to do when they discovered this, the city discovered McGovern's scam that he was pulling. They fired him, they terminated the contract, but the problem was there was still 2,000 bodies estimated to be buried here at the former Denver City Cemetery. Wow. They had a huge problem at that point. What do they do? They looked at other undertakers coming in here to do it, but ultimately decided what they were gonna do was just level this property off. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, we got a guest. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good morning. Or <laughs> good evening. Don't pee on me. <laughs> hi. Hi. Are you a cutie? <laughs> My buddy. What's going on? You want to tell us about the Denver City Cemetery? No. <laughs> but what they decided to do ultimately after they discovered what McGovern did was they decided to just level all of this out to turn it into the park that they had always envisioned. But in doing so, they believe that there are still over 2,000 people buried beneath Cheeseman Park. And yeah. still to this day, they find bones that come up from under the ground. Four skeletons were found in 2010, nearly 40 more in 2008. When it rains, the density of the bones can actually um, cause them to rise to the surface. Connor, didn't you say that ha happened recently? Yeah, recently. There's actually a place called Botan the Botanic Gardens, and it's sort of connected to Cheeseman Park. I'm not sure which direction it is, but I want to say either last year or two years ago in February, which is, this is February, yeah. they just found a bone sticking up out of the ground. Wow. A portion of the Denver Botanical Gardens is being renovated, and during the digging, an unexpected recovery, human remains. Turns out much of the area around the gardens was once a cemetery. So what we'll probably do is find a nice quiet place around here and maybe turn on the spirit box, maybe set up the REM pod, and sit down and see if we can have some maybe interaction with someone who might haunt Cheeseman Park. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You guys want wide angle on this or what? Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. I'm, I can see both of you in the tree. Okay. But my feet are freezing though. I'm, I'm putting... hiding. You're hiding? Whoa. Whoa. Hey, the REM pod. Which one was that? It was the actual know. REM pod. You just lit up. Ghost tube is rolling. Okay. I also have the spirit box that we're going to run on here. We um, we can't necessarily do a full-fledged investigation because, like we said, the park is really busy right now. It's the first nice day they've had in a few days. There's a lot of people walking around. But we're just going to set up here for a second and see if we can make communication with anyone. And while we were trying to set up, the REM pod already blipped. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was really weird. That was, was weird. It was like a tap. Kind of like when we were at Helen's grave. Yeah. And right after the ghost tube said, I'm hiding. Mm -hmm. Were you buried here on this property by this tree? If you were, you can light up our device there like you did. Let us know. Are there still bodies under this park? I'm gonna go ahead and roll on this spirit box here. Hunger. Hunger, right? It said hunger. Yes, I do. Inmate. Inmate? Inmate. What was weird was they said, they said that this park, the cemetery when it was first here, was generally used for people that were, I guess they could say lower on society's totem pole. People yeah. that were unidentified. They put a lot of people here who died from outbreaks of diseases like smallpox and things. People whose bodies were never identified. And the ones that were left behind here that needed exhumed were all ones that they really didn't know who they were or had family who really didn't come back to claim them. So an inmate being buried here would, would be highly probable. Yeah. yeah, it would make sense. Yeah. Let me turn this on again. Okay, if there's anyone here, there's a box that I have in my hand that you should be able to talk through. Can you come through and say hello to us? How many people are still buried underneath of this park? That was weird. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. It sounded like someone said two as soon as I two. pulled that away. Are there two buried here under this tree? E.P. McGovern, are you here? Do you want someone to move your body from underneath this park or are you happy here? There's something there. Can you tell us the name of anybody that could still be here? Did you die from smallpox? Stop it. Stop it. Ghost tube just says stop it. Are you upset with there us? There is. There is. Someone from smallpox, you asked. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. He just said, <laughs> it's only buried here for that die from smallpox. And he just said, there is. Wow. Whoa. That is cool. Wow. Well, well, thank you for speaking with me. You know, another way to communicate with this is with these devices right here. Look at that. So if you'd like to try doing that as well, you can. So you passed away from smallpox. How old were you? How, how many people died from smallpox that are buried here? Ooh, that was creepy. Yeah. It's, like, it's, like, it's like a man said did or many or something. Many. Oh, wow. Did you hear that? <laughs> wow. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Wow. What the hell? Wow, that's spooky. Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah, spooky. That's real spooky. Whose voice just came through there? Can you tell us your name? How did you come to the city of Denver?
it sounded like it just said body. Yeah. Did you hear that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Body. This is really spooky. It is very <laughs> spooky. Did E.P. McGovern not move your body? Did E.P. McGovern steal from you? Disfigured. <laughs> disfigured? It just said disfigured because he would cut up the bodies and put it in a children's coffin, right? Yeah. So he could make more money. Yeah. Did he do that to your body? Where in this park should we look for you? We want to talk to you and give you a chance to tell your story to others. Where, sh where should we go to speak to you? Don't leave. What? I said don't leave? Do you want us to stay here? Yeah. What should I do? Well, come out and talk to us. That would be great. We're going to be leaving here in just a couple of minutes, so we would love to talk to you. Whenever you look at Cheeseman Park, that is always the most prominent statue, I guess like not statue, a structure mm -hmm. that's on this land is always that picture of that um, little thing right there. So I would imagine some of the most original sections of this cemetery is where we're at right now. It's further down you can be, but look at where we're at right now, how wide this is. And with the last cemetery we just had, we would definitely probably be where there were bodies at. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Let me start on this again. Do a little session right here just to... As I start to sweep on the spirit box again, our GoPro that's set up to record the mail meter and REM pod randomly stops recording. This was caused by a memory card error, but the memory card wasn't full and the battery was far from drained. So it's just a formatting issue with the camera and memory card, but it will soon come to make us very sad with what's about to happen. If there's anyone that is here with us, there was someone that was speaking to us down by the tree. We'd love it if you'd come out and say hello to us and let us know if you are still buried here. A man's voice just sounded like it said yes. What did it say? I couldn't hear it. I didn't hear it, but... That sounded like the ghost tube came through the spirit box. It didn't say anything. Grave. Grave. Are you for real? What? <laughs> okay. Yes, grave. I just said a minute ago, too, we could be standing on the area where the graves would be at, because this this thing behind us is like always in all the pictures of Cheeseman Park. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are we standing on top of a grave right now? If your grave is here, can you please tell us your I'm name? I'm in pain. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. We're sorry that you're in pain. Is there something we can do to help? Was your body dug up and moved from this spot? I, I hope this is steady footage. You guys are like silhouettes now anymore. Okay. No, I'm sorry. That's all right. It won't go up any any higher at 2.8. I think if you come on this side, it would. Yeah. 2.8. Oh, f man. My feet are hurting, guys. I know. Mine are too. <sighs> When's it? What time is it? Um, 5.54. Okay. okay. Whoa. Oh. Dude, it. Are you. There is no way. I did not here. catch that. It's Look at it's going off. The GoPro got it. The GoPro got it. I think. And now it's stopped. 
No, the GoPro is dead. What? SD card error? That means it wasn't, even, it wasn't recording it? No, this wasn't even recording because... Dude, it just fell over and was going off and then it just stopped. Formatting is the only way to delete it, but it will... Were you recording when that fell? Uh, I wasn't looking at it. I was moving around. I could have caught it with my camera, though. Yeah, because none of us were moving when that happened. No, yeah. and just to make a note, it's not windy out here. No. No. There's, like, no wind at all right well, now. It's what so was, calm. What was weird was when it fell, though, like, the EMF on that started going off, and it just stops. Yeah. Unfortunately, when the Melmeter fell, the GoPro had malfunctioned and stopped recording. The only camera that caught a glimpse of the Melmeter falling was Dave's camera, which just barely caught the top of it in the bottom of frame. As Dave said, the wind is still, and we made sure to set it on the most stable ground for it to stand up. But because the GoPro wasn't recording, we don't have the information to even claim that this is paranormal evidence. The timing is odd, but there are so many factors that could be in place here. All we can do is set it back up and try to get it to fall again. I don't know, that's freaking creepy. Uh, I'm hoping I caught that in the camera, guys, but... Yeah, me too. And it's on flat ground. Yeah. Like, jump the side of it? <laughs> yeah. Dude, there's no way. No. Like... That's wild. What a crazy way to end the Cheeseman Park segment. But like, I am so, because imagine if that would have been recording. Hey, oh. it just went off. I, did, I don't, I think I got it on my camera. I just went off, I saw the green. I'm gonna you, put that camera there now. You can try and push that over again if you don't like it being there. If it's on your grave and you don't want it there. Oh. Push it over again. Come on, push it over if you don't want it there. Show us you can do it. And it's not something around us because the rim pod is not going off either. Yeah, no. But like, what are the chances that that would be mysteriously completely corrupted, the GoPro would? when it's been working fine this whole time. Right. And it was recording when I sat it down there. And then that falls over. I'll be interested to see when that stops recording. Yeah. But it is on such solid ground right there. I made sure when I set it up that it was on. Night. Like, night? Mm -hmm. It is night. Night <laughs> is falling. It is. It was on such level ground and now as soon as I set it back up, it starts alarming again. That is really cool. That's yeah. wild, man. That's what a wild. way to end a place I've never been to either, you know? I've <laughs> always wanted to go to Cheeseman Park just because I've heard the stories about bodies still being underneath here. And you know, I thought- Sure. Hey, sure. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> Even they got commentary on what I'm saying right now. <laughs> I've always wanted to come here just because it's mysterious. It's like the urban legend of like, this place is one of the places in Denver that's known to be haunted and like, look what just happened. Yeah. You know, like with the responses we got in Ghost Tube, it really is probably haunted here. It's really creepy here at night too. It is. It is very creepy, but we wanted to just make this video for you guys because we are in Denver traveling and filming and we didn't have time to do a full length episode for you this week. So we really thought you'd enjoy getting to go see Helen Nosworthy's grave, the woman who named the Ouija board. And then here, Cheeseman Park, one of the creepiest and possibly most haunted places in Denver, Colorado. And we hope you enjoyed this because we had a lot of fun making it, but the sun's going down, our feet are wet from walking through the slush in the cemetery and we're about to get frostbite on our toes, so. <laughs> But remember, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. We want to get this episode up to 7,000 thumbs up. And if you can get us there, we would greatly appreciate it because that helps the video reach a wider audience. If you liked any part of this video, you thought any part was creepy, anything that we may have missed, put it down in the comment section below. That also helps the channel more than you know. <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't know it, but... <laughs> 
Thank you guys so much. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Turn on bell notifications, and we'll see you on the next adventure. More videos from our quest. We'll see you next time.